Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. Today, we are honored to be sitting down and speaking with Red Deer Counselor Lawrence Lee. Red Deer's promise is real balance. Residents of the community work hard and make living easy. An active city rooted in an expansive park in Red Deer, you'll find balance like nowhere else. So step out your door and onto a nature trail. Step up the ladder and onto the path of prosperity. Red Deer's attitude is all in. They'll pitch in, they'll chime in, and of course, they are all in, especially when it comes to building the vibrant community. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Red Deer Councillor Lawrence Lee. From the smallest village to the largest city across every region of the province, Alberta Municipalities represents the communities where over 85% of Albertans live. AB Munis provides a united voice for 265 of Alberta's 330 municipalities, including summer villages, villages, towns, cities, and specialized municipalities. As Alberta's largest municipal group, AB Munis listens to municipal leaders and advocates for solutions to their common issues. Additionally, AB Munis supports local governments by providing services specially designed to meet their operational needs and they bring their members together regularly so they can share ideas and information so that their communities can thrive. Check out Alberta Municipalities at abmunis.ca and follow them on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, now called X. Counselor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start at the beginning of the interview with the question I've asked every single person who's ever come on the show, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Lawrence? Well, I blame that uh, squarely on my two daughters. Uh, when they were first in uh, elementary, um, there was a meeting held, uh, like most uh, uh, school jurisdictions, they hold a meeting, uh, meet the parents, meet the teachers, uh, and I went into a library um, and it, uh, it was actually a, a parent council meeting for the school. Uh, and they were talking about finances, how to fund a trip to the Telesign Center. Uh, so I worked at that point for the Jim Patterson group. Um, and I was like, well, I pay taxes. Um, you know, why, why would I have to be concerned about how to get these kids on a bus and down to Calgary from Red Deer? Um, but that's how it started. Uh, so after that meeting, a long story short, um, I, I got a little bit bug, uh, bit by the bug of political um, advocacy uh, and uh, took on the role of a parent council chair uh, of the school board or the school and then uh, was encouraged to run for school board. Uh, after that, about five years later, did that and uh, it just progressed. I, I, uh, I saw the the amount of um, uh, leadership that uh, um, you could you could influence uh, through through those types of uh, channels um, and ran for city council and I was fortunate enough to get elected in uh, 2013 after three terms of uh, being the school board chair of Red Deer Public Schools. So there, there's a few things I want to unpack here for a second, and I want to start by asking the simple question, but it's a big question. Uh, I, I've had very few people on this show who have gone from school board trustee to municipal politics, but there have been a few, but not a lot. What's the biggest difference, in your opinion, taking out the context of it's a school division and it's a municipality, so there are two big overarching differences, but as an elected official at the municipal level compared to the school board level, is there a big difference, would you say, or was there a learning curve for yourself to go into the role as a municipal councillor compared to a school board trustee? Yeah, Chris, absolutely uh, there was. Um, my my motivation and intention um, at the school board level um, was purely about how to better advocate for classroom conditions, um, local school funding for things like transportation, uh, because school boards, um, ultimately, they don't have uh, the taxation lever. Uh, they're, they're there to, uh, um, you know, monitor the issues of the day and kind of uh, have those meetings with government, the provincial government, the Minister of Education, uh, to 
um, you know, put forth your case. Uh, this is the reasons why Red Deer needs X. Um, this is the reason we deserve uh, to better serve our students. Uh, and I'll have to say, you know, that taught me a lot uh, and I think uh, readied me for the position of um, be ultimately becoming a city councillor uh, because it wasn't about, oh, you're there to uh, um, get any platitudes. Uh, as you know, Chris, how often does your general public um, even recognize who the trustees uh, in their local uh, riding or jurisdiction are? Uh, they're just in the background fighting every single day uh, having those meetings with officials. Um, and, uh, you know, I say it, there, there is no real remuneration for that. I think uh, in my times as, as school board, um, you know, when I first ran, I went and talked to the superintendent of schools. They said, oh, yeah, uh, you know what? It's about two meetings a month. The meetings go for about four or five hours on an evening. Um, and I was working full time. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, that's no problem. Uh, but when you really get into it, and because of the, the time frame that I was actually on school boards, 2004 to 2013, um, it was a challenging time to, um, you know, get everything that, that the evolution of uh, municipal uh, or uh, local politics were at that time and at that stage. Uh, so you were putting in some pretty hard, long hours and long days uh, to advocate for those funding requests. Uh, so, so that's, I think, um, the difference uh, between that. Did it ready me a lot uh, about the networks are the same, uh, uh, believe it or not. The agencies that you deal with at the school board level are similar to what you do on a municipal council. Um, and the people, uh, the, the players, uh, because community is community whether you're in uh, school jurisdictions or whether you're talking about um, local politics in the supermarket or on, on uh, the sports field or anything like that. <clears throat> so I think that's, um, uh, you know, how it kind of transitions into uh, being a counselor, but I never thought I would be in politics, uh, to be honest with you. I never thought that I'm trained in corporate Canada. I have had over a 20 year uh, uh, career in corporate Canada. I, I never thought about pursuing it to the level I have, um, but I'm sure glad I did. Was politics discussed at the dinner table growing up though? Uh, not at all. I, I'm, uh, I come from, uh, uh, um, you know, a family that uh, was, you know, in a, in a neighborhood here in Red Deer. Uh, and uh, my dad and mom ran the local corner store. Um, and we were all about customer service, which I guess ties into municipal politics. Uh, but it was just about, you know, uh, serving the community the best way you could. I was standing on a Coke box uh, behind a, a cash register when I was five years old. Um, you know, I guess honing my skills as, a, as a, you know, a public servant, but, you know, from the, the, the local store uh, perspective. So, no, dinner table was not about who you're voting for, what the difference uh, could I have told you who was the leader of a conservative party or a liberal party or a, a green party at that point in time? Absolutely not. And we were all about, you know, keep your head down, get a good education, go to university <laughs> and get a good job. So you mentioned something when you were talking about school board trustees, and I want to preface it. I want to just co collate it to the role of a municipal leader. You, you said in your sort of description there that most people wouldn't under know who their local trustee is or where their local, like even what their local trustee does. Now, in my time of doing this show, I have learned that more and more people do not understand the role that the municipality plays in their lives. And to go further there, they probably wouldn't know who their local counselor is. They probably, if they follow politics, if they know you, they'll know that you're the counselor. But it's hard pressed to find people in a larger city like Red Deer, Edmonton, or Calgary who would say, okay, that's my local counselor there, or that's my local mayor. Do you find that in Red Deer that people are apathetic when it comes to municipal politics and don't really understand the role that you play and even who you are at sometimes? Yeah, the, I, I think the numbers in terms of when you go to the polls and you see actually uh, who's <laughs> engaged in voting uh, in an election, uh, which would skew to that, would show 
um, that, you know, oh, maybe there's some apathy in our community. Um, on the other side of the coin, though, uh, and, and I can only speak from my own personal experience, um, you have to be um, really engaged in, in, in community. Uh, Red do you say, uh, and we're way, well, we're over 100, and, I'd say over 110,000 now, uh, just given the amount of migration that's coming into our city. Uh, but I mean, I've, I've, whether it was uh, unintentionally or uh, just through the, the networks of people or the business community or, um, you know, uh, volunteer community, that sort of thing, uh, have been really fortunate to uh, attend so much. So whether it's a cultural event, whether it's a music festival, uh, whether it's a sporting event, um, I'm usually there because I was, you know, my, had a young family and young in my career growing uh, in politics. So I was, I was out and about. Uh, and I, I think that's one of the things that I recognized, um, not, uh, not right out of the gate, but uh, it was more when, when having conversations with constituents, Lawrence, you're everywhere. Um, you know, I, I, I see you and, and they kind of know what you're doing. Is that the same for every uh, uh, municipally elected official? Maybe for mayors, I think it is because that's their role. Uh, they're the public interface between council uh, and, uh, um, you know, all the outside, uh, um, you know, media streams and world that, that happens out there. Um, but that has really been my experience, Chris. It's been about... Um, you know, I love it so much to engage and I'm, I, I, because I think because of the school board trustee in me, um, the, the kind of the sentiment that, you know, this is a, a, a lifelong continuous, uh, educational journey. Um, because once you, once you, uh, um, lose that perspective or get, get pushed out of that lens, I would say it's pretty tough. Cause I've seen, I've seen it go the other way too, where, uh, there is, like any other profession, uh, burnout, um, and uh, you know you get frustrated at uh, you know half the community being mad at you for making one decision, and and half the community cheering for you when you make another decision, um, and that that wears on some people. But for me, uh, when you when you look at community life, you recognize the challenges of um, anything not being static, of all issues. Uh, having uh, validity from one perspective or another. It's just getting down to that level and, um, you know, I think interplaying in that that space. So that brings up a good question is you, after 10 years as municipal councillor, you probably have come to the realization you're not pleasing 100% of the people on any issue. <laughs> and I say, and I say any issue, like you could vote on the most simplest thing, but someone will probably have an issue with it. How do you make the decision? I say you as the individual counselor make the decision that is in the best interest of the community, understanding that you're going to end up potentially, no matter what you do, upsetting somebody. You know, it, that's a great question because it brings the principle of why do we as politics uh, um, and the whole sphere of the political realm uh, do what we do? What is our role? Our role is not to try to uh, imprint uh, um, other perspectives on others, uh, but from a municipal perspective, when you look at what's the politics of running a transit system, of doing road infrastructure, of setting up uh, recreation amenities for the facility, providing emergency services uh, for, for our uh, uh, great city of Red Deer, um, and when you when you go into those discussions, and again, this is, I think, uh, the background I come from in terms of recognizing very early that when you work from uh, a well-informed, not uh, partisan view, you take good analysis, good data, and you look at outcomes for uh, what you're trying to achieve. Really young families in Red Deer, we're a young city. Uh, and I recognize that when I was in school board of all the young families and, and uh, students and kids that were in our community, what would they envision? What would they see if they were in a position of being on uh, municipal government? What would they want for themselves and their families? Uh, once you start delving into that, it's so complex, I get it, but you come to fundamental decisions that say, 
what provides the best outcome for my community by making this decision the way I want to now. Um, not about fulfilling uh, a short-term budget request or trying to uh, uh, make sense of a, a, a response, responsible pet ownership bylaw, uh, things like that. If you kind of disseminate it down to what the true long-term vision is, um, and I think that's what good uh, municipal leadership has done uh, all over across our country is you, you got to be, you got to take it outside of yourself. You have to understand that it's not what you're doing uh, here right now uh, for Lawrence Lee or for Chris Brown or for Joe Smith or Sally Jane. It's about what you're doing to create a legacy for the people that come after you. So I, I think when, once you do that, um, I don't, uh, um, and I know this isn't uh, uh, typical, uh, but I have to say, uh, I don't get a lot of uh, pushback from the community uh, because if you sit down and reason with them, um, no matter how angry or, about an issue or how, um, uh, you know, I think oppositional those, those uh, um, views may be, if you sit down and talk to somebody like, you know, from that perspective, you kind of de-escalate, you kind of get people into a space where they feel comfortable and they see through, it's so easy to see when you're being sold a, um, a, you know, a bill of goods where it's not really, oh, I'm following this uh, a script that the this communications department has given me. I'll take points like that, but really, if you're speaking from the heart and you're really doing uh, it from an outcome-based perspective, I think you 90% of the time you, you get to the, um, you make the right decisions. And that's how I, that's how I go about making decisions. Get that best amount of data, uh, couple it with uh, what, what, how, how that impacts what you think the outcome will be with all the variables that you throw in and you throw that into the recipe and you, you kind of get a cake that comes out not too bad. So how fluid do you have to be in your job? Because we all have unconscious biases when we have decisions that we have to make. But as a municipal councillor, you can't have a bias when you're voting on something. You have to make it in the best interest and follow the MGA. And there are things that you probably have close to your heart that you believe in passionately. That is your sort of uh, belief in life and how you believe that the community should uh, go forward. But if the overwhelming majority, and I'm playing a little bit devil's advocate with you, so please apologize for a second. Um, if if the overwhelming majority say, Lawrence, this is not the way we should go. We should go this way. How how fluid do you have to be to say, okay, you know what? I do believe that this is the way, but I'm hearing from the people in my community. I'm hearing from people on social media, which we should never believe on what social media, because let's be honest, it's not a place where people... The discussion is not the best, let's put it that way. How important is it for you to be fluid in your understanding of what the community needs, but understand that your beliefs and what the community believes are going to be potentially two different things, and you're going to have to potentially vote against your best interest because the community wants something different than what you want? You know, it's an indispensable um, item in the toolkit to have that. Um Am I there a hundred percent? Absolutely not. Uh, I'm a human being just like everyone else. Absolutely, I was educated in a system. I was taught things uh, different ways. Um, but one thing I learned uh, throughout my whole educational career um, is when we, we speak about critical learning and critical thinking, um, the components to that are so vital in today's world when you talk about social media, when you talk about how you uh, differentiate between what's real, what's fake, uh, what information is value to, to, valuable to you uh, to disseminate. I think it comes from that area. Uh, and the bias, you know, when you look at only a fiscal perspective on an issue. It could be very easy because that's what we have accountants for. That's what we have administration. We have data we can pull uh, till the cows come home to tell you exactly uh, how it's gonna hit you financially. But then it looks at the quality of life. This is the magic I think in municipal politics. 
other orders of government aren't attuned to the level of feedback um, and continuous feedback that you can get when you go to that community gathering, that community space, that event, because you hear all the different perspectives. Sure, I may say it's not worth it. The data says, don't do this. We can't build that. We can't we can support that. We can't resource it. Uh, yet you have an advocacy group coming from a different perspective saying, wait a minute, this is life or death. This is what we have to do to ensure uh, the vitality of our community. Or um, you can't quantify um, getting somebody to uh, work on a bus, uh, getting to work on a hospital. You can't quantify that uh, when you're looking at empty buses going on routes throughout our city from a fiscal perspective. Uh, but what you can quantify is, are we in the right game? Is it a principle to provide transportation uh, to those that typically wouldn't be able to afford it or have no other means or modes of transportation? That's just one example. Uh, I use it because it's a simple municipal service. It gets complex. I have bias about maybe policing. Should we use our policing differently? But here's why, um, you know, I think elected leadership is, is so, um, uh, I think, continual and evolving, to your point, about evolution. Uh, you get information fluidly every single day. And you need to be open to look at that and really say, is, that, is it the, the guy on the left or right shoulder saying, you know, no matter what, we're going we're gonna to do this because I, I believe in this more than um, my constituents. Well, if you get to that point, um, you're going to have a limited shelf life. Uh, and the reason is, it, it is that the fluidity isn't being about fluid. It's about understanding where and how it impacts those people that are, are, are vocal about one side of the issue or not. We all want a better community. I, I don't, I've never, you can, I can undeniably say that in every single issue, whether it was with school board, whether it's a municipal politics, that it wasn't from a good place that people were coming to you, uh, whether they were angry, elevated, whether they were polite, whether they were pro uh, professional and diplomatic, there always was a place to say, well, you know what? even if it was for political ideology, we want a better space for this. Uh, it's it's the, the discussion and the conversation is about how to get there. And so the long question, the long answer to your uh, question is, when I talked about critical thinking, one of my math teachers uh, said, hey, what, what is nine times seven, 63? How many ways is there to get to 63? A hundred different ways. Are any of them right or wrong? You get the same product in a math sense to get 63. And that's what we're all trying to do. So is, is X way or is your way or my way better to get to the outcome? There's lots of different ways to get to it, but it may involve different uh, uh, inputs or different variables. That's where the politics comes in, uh, because you know how you pull that trigger uh, will ultimately um, you know get you to the the result you want. But was it done in a way that the community responds to it and understands it? Uh, and that's that's why you hear so much about transparency and accountability now in public policy, uh, and that's important for us because if we don't have that. Um, you don't get that understanding. The level of critical thinking to get into a space that says, hey, listen, we're talking the same language. We just have different methods and, and ways of getting to it. And, you know, uh, it, it takes me back to the restaurant days uh, when I was, uh, you know, in one of my family restaurants and you see the cooks uh, um, cooking and how they would prepare a dish. Um, oh, no. You put this in first or that first or you don't, don't do this or whatever. 
all I care about is that that dish tastes really good when I'm, I'm eating it at the dinner table. So that's kind of the examples I use, Chris. So I want to turn to the great city of Red Deer as a whole now. And I want to preface this line of questioning because we're talking about a little bit about community. And I try to make sure that I clarify this because I will get probably emails if I don't. This is a conversation between the councillor and myself. This is his opinion and his opinion alone. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not a policy of council. This is his opinion. That being said, councillor, in your opinion, as of recording this interview, what do you believe is the biggest challenge facing or challenges facing the city of Red Deer today? Well, that's a tough one because the the reason I would pick um, addictions um, and I would talk about, um, you know, maybe the criminal code. I would talk maybe, um, and I, I, I don't, when... When counselors always, this is the flavor of the day. It's housing. It's it's all about housing and this, this, that, and the other thing. It's it's not just about housing. It's about how uh, we deal with um, tenants and how they um, you know adapt to shelter. So those sorts of things and. The reason I, I hesitate is because here's where the complexity get. You're asking me as an individual what the biggest issue facing our community is. Um, and it's not just one thing. It is an overall thing where we have little or no control from a purely uh, municipal governance level. So that's what, again, we, you, you talked about it earlier in the interview. What did school board teach me? It's taught me that we still have to sit down with other orders of government, be that provincial and, and federal, um, to, to put our perspectives of why. Because if we are truly uh, the order of government closest to the people, they need to be able to be open and fluid to the discussions that the community generates. And we don't. So we don't have either the, the resourcing level or the expertise, frankly, to deal with a national health crisis uh, or um, you know, have the ability to change the criminal code of Canada. Um, yet those are things that we're identifying on a day-to-day -day basis because we're responsible for keeping our communities clean, for keeping our communities safe, <clears throat> So that's why it's, it's a little bit more complex than, than uh, um, just one particular issue um, because it does come, if you, you're going to ask me to put it under one umbrella, it's absolutely community safety because that's becoming more and more of a highlight for um, residents than it ever was uh, prior to that. Before it was education and healthcare. Uh, and those were, again, areas of, not municipally uh, run services, right? Like we ran recreation and sports centers to deal with uh, uh, mental health, to build character in our community, to uh, illustrate volunteerism. But it, it's in all of that that gets all fuzzied and mixed up on the path to, uh, um, and the reality of just living day to day now in, in terms of really, really challenging times for people. Okay, so you've touched uh, you've touched the third rail in municipal politics, which is it's not our responsibility. It's usually traditionally the responsibility of the upper levels of government. Criminal code, federal. Healthcare, education, housing, provincial, federal. So I I, I agree. The municipality has a role to play because they are the to quote Scott Pierce, president of FCM, the government yes. of proximity. You are literally the closest to the people. But if you go tell people in your community, that's not our responsibility, I guarantee you, I know what their response is going to be. We don't care. We're coming to you because you're the closest to us. We don't get our contact with our MLA. We probably don't know who our ML MP is because, and I'm not saying they don't know it in Red Deer. I'm just saying in the general context. So they're coming to you for a reason. They're coming to you to solve the issue, the people. 
how does the city of Red Deer, how do you solve the issue in the short term until those conversations can come up, until those conversations can happen? Because let's be honest, right now we're in a very political turmoil uh, level of uh, dysfunction when it comes to provincial and federal relations in this province, and they don't want to seem to sit down at the table. So how does the city of Red Deer move forward in a dynamic where no one's talking to each other at the other levels of government, and you're sort of trying to be the adult in the room to get everyone to talk. Yeah, and and that's the reality uh, for some people and how how you advocate for it. So, uh, Chris, you go to the doctor. The doctor tells you you have a condition, uh, gastrointestinitis, something like that. Is it that doctor that solves your problem? You came to him because you you knew you know him. You built a relationship with them. Of course, we as municipal politicians want to have a space where uh, people are coming to us because how would, um, you know, Joe constituent uh, have the ability uh, to e even uh, have the knowledge of, of what that network is to get help for it? All they're caring about is the, the medical condition that they're experiencing right now. So I want people to come to me. I don't want to ever say, you know what? You better go talk to MLA X. You better go talk to uh, MP Y. Yeah. Yeah. Because guess what? Part of our leadership is, is building those relationships. So um, I can't answer why any, any elected official would not want to have a conversation, would not want to be in a best position to fulfill their role with the advice and consultation of as many, many leaders in their community, elected or not. So subject matter experts on, on all fronts, because guess what? You're making decisions for not thousands of dollars or, or millions of dollars, but tens and hundreds of millions of dollars of impact. Uh, and I, I, I equate that to uh, dollars because that's what people can uh, relate to in terms of numbers. Uh, but in orders of magnitude, who can put value on uh, what an addictions crisis creates in a community for their emergency services, for their policing services, for their um, just waste disposal, cleanups, uh, you know, you can drill down uh, to the micro level as much as you want. Uh, so that's, th that's the dilemma. Uh, but you know what, we're, if, if, you're, if you're talking to somebody or you're having a conversation with a group of people or with a person uh, where, they're, uh, where they're already set and their mind's not open to, to having a conversation, that's, that's the tough part for me. And I think, um, uh, you know, everybody wants to engage. It's how you, how you break through that um, barrier. And it's through relationships. It is uh, maybe not coming through the front door, uh, but knowing somebody that knows uh, somebody that can uh, actually uh, reasonably, um, uh, you know, project their perspective into the mix, uh, because only when that happens, and you saw it happen um, with our, our uh, you know, our Mr. Municipal Affairs, Mr. Mr. McIver. Um, he came out first, and like you said, sometimes, and government just does that, whether they're doing it for efficiency or whatever, I don't know. Um, this is a bill that I present, this is what we're gonna do, this is how we're gonna do it. Oh, wait. Um, you have associations, um, you know, for 344 municipalities across Alberta um, that are saying maybe different things or have different tones of it. Uh, you can't backtrack that stuff. Uh, you have to be able to say then, oh, wait a minute, uh, put the brakes on. We may have made a miscalculation in the information that we were getting. Um, and you know, that's, that's, that's a whole other issue. If, if the panel of experts or if you're getting information from different places, um, they're going to have bias. Um, those, those, those positions are going to, you know, maybe not 
uh, the conventional way of doing um, you know, business or getting to a solution. But I take you back to the number 63. There's lots of different ways of getting there. You just got to get to the art. Do we want not agree that that's where we want to be as a province, as a city, as a country? Where do we want to be uh, as, um, you know, as people, as, uh, um, you know, in the global context? Where do we want to be and where, how do we want to be recognized for being Albertan, Canadian, a Redirian? Um, so that's, that's the challenge. And it's, you know, you, you bring up so many great points. I, I, I literally uh, could write a doctoral on this if I had to, uh, because I'm so passionate about it. Because um, as growing up, I'm thinking to myself, you know, what happened when you needed, you had a problem, you needed to come tell your mom or dad, you know, a lot of times I'd tell my teacher first, because guess what? I interacted with my teacher for 90% of the day and I saw my dad for 10% of the day. And in those times it was like, okay, stock the shelves, put the soup cans of soup on, on the thing, go run the register and stuff like that. So, so uh, I, I think it was that, that, you know, you kind of, you kind of build up a, a resiliency to, to say, listen, you got to talk to a different audience all the time or you're, if you get the same information from the same people all the time, you're gonna get the same results. Uh, and those may not align uh, with uh, the methodology or, or ways of uh, other groups or, or agencies or people or counselors to, to uh, uh, get you know, the right to the right end. So I want to talk, I want to ask you a flip side of that. The first question I asked about challenges, because I know you can answer this one, because I think every municipal politician knows how to answer this. But let's talk about accomplishments. And let's talk about the accomplishments of the government of the city of Red Deer, not the city of Red Deer as a community, because we're going to talk about that in the next segment in about two seconds. But what's the thing that you are the most proud of when it comes to the city of Red Deer's government, administration, the council? And when you go to conferences like Alberta municipalities or maybe even FCM, which is coming up on June 6th to June 9th in Calgary, what's the thing that you boast about that you guys are doing right in the city of Calgary, the city of Red Deer, sorry? You know, I, I will say it under this auspice, it is to be... Uh, the most open uh, and the most uh, approachable uh, council and welcoming city uh, to anybody that wants to come here and uh, start a family or open a business. Um, that is by far um, the reality that I see every single day. It's that ability to know your neighbor, to have uh, conversations in, in very... Uh, um, different spaces when the world is more and more um you know i i got a attached car garage i drive into my garage i shut the garage i don't interact with my neighbors i don't know what's going on down the street um so that's number one accomplishment in terms of um putting through public policy uh almost at every facet um the idea of a rigorous community engagement uh, and then all the other things fall in line. Like, sure, oh, I can talk about our economic development achievements, and we've just got you know thirty million dollars at our Red Deer Regional Airport uh, to do expansion to create uh, a hub for the economy and that sort of thing. Uh, for me, it's about how do we take down um, the, the barriers of how we're actually building. Our, our resiliency as a city, culturally, um, and uh, um, through entrepreneurship, through industry. Uh, and it's, it's all because of that family feel. It's still creating and being uh, a community in the center of Alberta, uh, at, at least the economic development portion of Alberta, um, that has that uh, attraction. Um, we don't have uh, a high vacancy in our city uh, for residential. We don't um, have uh, uh, like an affordability, affordability issue uh, in our city when it comes to housing. 
um, at this point, uh, even though they have those demands on it, it's because we look at all the, the, the inputs um, like taxation, like road services, like all the staff that work for our city uh, are think, thinking the same kind of thing. You know, are they taking pride in their jobs? And, and you know, I know big organizations, you got um, some that do and some that don't. I would, I, would, I would say in Red Deer, we have more doers than donors. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say for Red Deer for sure, how we, how we uh, stand out in the field. So uh, I was going to just jump to my last segment, but I want to talk about one because I know you are standing for the board of directors for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, table office, uh, not table officers, board of directors next week, by the time this airs next week, June 6th to June 9th. Um, can I just ask you a simple question? What does FCM mean to a counselor like yourself from the city of Red Deer? Well, it means, uh, it means that we, we, we have to, uh, get a better understanding of communication between what a Red Deer looks like, what an Alberta looks like in the federal context. How do we um, uh, kind of, you know, illustrate one size doesn't fit all. Um, not one path towards um, energy transition fits, not one path through housing, um, uh, affordable housing fits. Uh, it's, it's always remembering where you come from. The roots of central Alberta, and again, here, here's you know, one of the things that I, I just, I take for granted. Uh, we're kind of a rural urban community. And I learned a lot about uh, you know, how um, farm implementation and operations integrate into uh, an urban um, setting. Uh, and that's, a, that's an eye-opener in terms of, um, you know, the type of business entrepreneurs that go into agri-food versus the entrepreneurs that go into uh, um, um, a textile manufacturing or oil servicing uh, co company. Uh, that sense is in business all across the world. It isn't maybe to the level it could be, or that I would I would like to, uh, um, you know, uncover more for our federal counterparts. And it's at those discussions at the FCM table that board of directors you have an opportunity to really highlight what the gems are of Alberta and what the challenges are of Alberta, and where we need to to put out put up our hand and say, I need to better understand what's happening in Eastern Canada. I need to better understand what's happening in our, our coastal communities uh, to the West. Uh, and you get that context, but it's through those stories and conversations that I love the 76 directors uh, that are on that board. And I know most of them, uh, um, I'm, I'm happy to say most of them are my friends. You, on your speakers list, I could identify numerous of us like, oh my gosh, you know, you, this, this could just be a coming home for FCM. But, but anyway, uh, I say that because again, it, it, it really does, Chris. Uh, I can't emphasize this point for your listeners uh, um, more. Having good relationships and the word good is so uh, uh, great. It's because good, comes with understanding differences. It comes with saying, I don't agree with you on this climate change policy because in Alberta, the context of that may differ. Uh, but do we all agree that climate change is impacting our communities across the country? Heck yeah. So, so this is how we, we model ourselves to, to have those discussions in a tempered way that how does public policy form to enable municipalities across the country to be as fluid and as nimble and as flexible as they can. That is only at the local level because of all the things we talked about earlier in your program. Are you looking forward to seeing everyone back in uh, back? Well, at the convention this year in Calgary. Yeah, I, I love the group. I, I'm, I'm happy that it's in our backyard. 
uh, because one one part of FCM is is you showcase community and why do we do that? Let's delve into that for a second uh, for you, you know your listeners and and that why do we why are we so um, you know we have to put something on a pedestal we have to highlight what's best or what's challenging in your community. It's all a part of the same package. Uh, I like going to a community and feeling different things through different experiences. Uh, for me, it's food experiences. I love going to try different types of uh, cuisine uh, in different settings uh, and, and just understanding that because you, you have conversations that you typically wouldn't have any other place. Um, like it's a lot, it's a lot different and a lot less institutional when even in this setting, uh, I try and uh, um, bring my comfort level down because I envision you and I sitting across the table, uh, having a milkshake and a burger uh, or whatever you want to bring to the table. Um, and why? Uh, oh, that's interesting. You do that. I never knew you, you could mix gravy and ketchup for fries. Uh, what are you doing putting mustard on, on your uh, mac cheese? You know, things like that. Uh, you, you just don't get that without having those type of experiences. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, to being in our backyard. I'm looking forward to, to learning more because once you stop learning, get out of the game. <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I have any advice for the, 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 the people that come after, uh, yeah, when that stops happening, when you don't have that um, in – you know, just incessant and inherent uh, um, drive to continue to, to sh ex exhibit the, the commitment to community and why you're doing it, uh, the purpose and, 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 you know, overcoming all those challenges, take the wins when you can, but take the losses in stride and, and not to let it tear you down, um, then it's, it, it's time. That, that single's uh, a time for me to, to reevaluate, uh, you know, what I'm doing, right? Um, I want to turn back to Red Deer for a few seconds because I want to start wrapping up, if you don't mind, because I've taken up much more of your time than I expected. But I just want to ask my favorite subject, and that is tourism. I think municipalities play a big role in their tourism marketing of this great country of ours, but we don't do it as often as we should. And I want to start doing that, and I want to talk about the hidden gems. What are the hidden gems in Red Deer that potentially if someone's listening to this, who's coming to FCM conference next week and says, maybe I should take an extra day and drive up to Red Deer to see what it's all about. What is Red Deer all about? And what are the hidden gems that people need to see if they come through? Well, one, they absolutely should come uh, to see what the Red Deer and the Red Deer region offers in terms of tourism. We are a four season city. Uh, we are a city in the park. Uh, so whether it's bike, what does that mean? What does that mean? Because I read that on your website. I was trying to figure out what that meant. Because look, look at our tree canopy. Look at our trail system. The idea of the leaders that came before me to create a, the Waskasu uh, Park Plan to connect the city, uh, whether you're biking, walking, scootering, whatever the, the modality of transport you want to be, you can be anywhere in Red Deer um, in any time, take your pace. And as you're doing that, you can experience, again, because uh, you know me and the cuisine now, I guess, uh, the local flavors of uh, um, you know farm produced food that's within 20 minutes of Red Deer, uh, microbrewery, stuff like that. Yet, yeah, here's the other things, so many affordable free things, spray parks, uh, we got uh, sports fields. We got, um, again, the trails. Uh, take a kayak down the Red Deer River. When I was little, uh, we, we didn't have much, but we could round up a life jacket. I took a life jacket and I threw it on and we would just ride the rapids uh, down, down by Setter's Place. Um, those sorts of things. We've got um, heritage rides. You want to go ride a horse. You want to go fishing. You want to... You know, there's so many things about Red Deer that you need to experience. And again, uh, if you want to go on the more commercial ends, we've got like alpine coasters, we've got golfing, we've got, um, oh my gosh, you, you can go parachuting out at uh, Skywings Aviation if you wanted to do something like that. Um, so, I mean, it, it's until you do that, but 
always take a red gear in with you because uh, um, that way you, you, you'll, you'll see some things. Um, it's it's kind of like our bronze ghosts that are out throughout the community. They all each tell a story. You, you may see them and that's a, that's a great work of art. But until you start having that walking tour uh, uh, and understanding what each piece and how they're connected, um, you got that. If you want some cultural experiences, murals down our alley created by local artists, our museums, our library. So we got all the big city stuff. Yeah, maybe we could have some better restaurants here and there with some different cuisines. But again, that's my personal bias coming out. But but uh, uh, there's so much to do around around here in our region. I'm so proud of. Um, yeah, that and that's why I'm a Red Deer, and that's why I'm a raised Red Deer, and I, I, no matter where I've been, I've worked all over Canada and internationally. I always come back to Red Deer. Well, this summer when I'm up back up in Red Deer, I'll look you up and I'll grab a. We'll go grab your favorite cuisine in the community because dealer's choice, as I always say, when it comes uh, to food in different communities. I'll hold you to that, crispy, and I mean it because uh, I love that. See, you know, I, I I didn't know much about you before this interview. Um, I know enough now that I'd absolutely uh, uh, take you by the hand and we'll go. Uh, you know, we'll go rip apart whatever we can do and uh, lots of questions, lots of learning and, and lots of good experiences for sure. So my final question for you, Councillor Lawrence, and that is, in your opinion, what makes Red Deer such a unique place to live, to work and to raise a family? The people. Uh, absolutely. The, the spirit that, these, that this community has when it comes to wanting to do um, what they believe in is um, it's remarkable. Uh, the amount of drive and passion and commitment uh, that the majority of this community have for whatever issue it may be, uh, it inspires me. It, it actually uh, um, comforts me in the days that I have, tough days. I remember to lie back where I was when I was growing up here uh, and how the future can't be the past but it can be better. It can be different. Uh, and it has to be because um, our youth of today, which are our leaders of today, everybody says our youth are our future. No, there are now. Um, if you, if you, you talk about social media from a different uh, parapet, I talk about it in terms of connectivity. And uh, I want them to, uh, all the youth that listen to this program, um, to actually have more uh, um, actually one-on-one -on -one or one-on group where, where you're present uh, interactions, not on an e-gaming, uh, um, you know, course or those sorts of things. But yeah, so uh, it, is, it is the people. It's the community of people that the makeup of Red Deer, um, the, it's, you, you've heard this before, I know it. It's not just the can-do attitude of Red Deerians, it's their pride and their uh, um, dedication uh, you know, to this community and how, how we all wanna see better outcomes. There's that word again, better outcomes for the community. It's just, how do we get there in a way that we all agree or we don't have to agree, but understand. Lawrence, I wanna thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. This was an honor and it was a great way to end uh, Alberta week on the show. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Looking forward to seeing you at FCM in Calgary, which I will be at. So uh, looking forward to potentially saying hi to you, but I'm looking also forward to getting a sort of a counselor's tour of Red Deer when I come up later on this summer. Absolutely, it's, it's a done deal anytime. It's an open invitation, Chris. Thank you for tuning in for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content and diverse interviews that we have coming up on the Cross Border Interviews in June. Over the next few weeks, we'll be talking to municipal leaders from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities in Calgary, Alberta. So you will not want to miss all June's interviews where we sit down in Calgary with leaders from across Canada. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.